Will Congress be able to keep charging expenses to America's credit card? We're about to find out. Forget raising the roof, today we're raising the ceiling, specifically the debt ceiling. So first, what is the debt ceiling? Well, most of the coverage on this issue reads like a medical diagnosis. I don't understand two thirds of those words, but I am very alarmed. Simply put, America pays for things two ways. We either use the cash we raise through taxing people, or we use this handy little federal credit card to sort of fill in the cracks. Oh, we want to spend $100 on bridges? Oof, looks like we only raised $70 through taxing people. Eh, that's okay, I can charge the rest to my American Express card. Now, unfortunately, America's credit card has a spending limit, also known as the debt ceiling. Now, that amount is currently set at $28.5 trillion. Try to borrow more than that amount, and the Treasury's fundraising efforts are going to be blocked. At that point, you're just sitting on revenue from taxation and waiting for next April to come around. Sounds like a pretty simple enough problem to solve, right? Either raise that ceiling or spend within your budget. Here's the rub though. When America buys something, we generally use a long term payment plan. Don't want a bunch of repo people kicking down the door and taking Hawaii. More realistically, this would be the government telling its citizens, Hey, remember how we told you social security was a thing we were doing? Or how Congress just promised to spend a trillion dollars on infrastructure over the next few years? Yeah, funny story about that. At the start of the pandemic, Congress wrote themselves a blank check. We're giving ourselves a no limit credit card, take what we can from taxes, and on top of that, borrow away until we get out of this thing. And the government did not let itself down, borrowing $6.5 trillion since they made that decision. Problem is, that no limit charge card just expired on July 31st, leaving us with a lot of promises and a little money. After July 31st, when our unlimited borrowing plan expired, the debt ceiling was set at $28.5 trillion. Can't borrow more than that. We currently owe, well, slightly more than that. Not a good sign. If you're living paycheck to paycheck right now, don't worry, you're not alone. So is the federal government. As of August 1st, the Treasury has not been able to borrow money beyond replacing expiring debt. Now, of course, that doesn't mean we're completely out of money. It means we'll be completely out of money by October, just in time for Halloween. It's estimated that America is currently sitting about $450 in cash. Down from twice that much last month. Now, the Treasury's looking into tapping all sorts of emergency funds, doing some creative accounting, and halting regularly scheduled investments in order to get this cash to last us as long as possible. Now, through doing all these other ventures, the Treasury predicts that they'll be able to probably run out of cash sometime in October or November. And when I say run out of cash, I mean run out of cash. Federal employees, we can't pay you. Medicare, you're going to have to wait until we scrape together a little bit of money. In fact, a few wars might end up getting called off early. Wait, we're about to pay how much to bomb Iranian proxies? Whew, let's give peace a chance. You know, in America, we've seen partial government shutdowns before where essential workers stay in their places. But this would be the first time America would default on critical operations. So now to the reassuring part of this episode. I am 99.9% .9 sure that none of this is going to happen. The name of the game to avoid this is politics, pure and simple. Raising the debt limit could arguably accomplish through budget reconciliation or both parties just sort of coming together and agreeing to pay for the things Congress already voted to pay for. Recently, people were surprised when the Democrats left raising the debt ceiling out of their $3.5 trillion spending plan. Hey guys, the entire federal government right now is sitting on about $450 billion. Might want to shave a few zeros off of that plan. Instead, Democratic leadership is planning to raise the debt ceiling on a bipartisan basis. Really merging into the slow lane to dispose of this dick and dime bomb. 
Now, Democrats have demanded that Republicans join them in approving this higher debt limit ceiling, hoping to avoid the political blame for being the party solely responsible for approving a higher spending limit. But Senate Republicans have threatened not to support the debt spending increase unless Congress approves spending cuts or other measures. Now, based on the buzzer shot legislation we've seen coming from this Congress recently, I suspect we're about to find out just how far you can get the government to go on an empty tank. Until this debate hits its boiling point in about a month or so, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.